I always say impact matters more than intent when it comes to recognizing if a relationship is narcissistic or not, if the person that you're with is a narcissist is or not. Because narcissism, even though all narcissists function in a similar way, there are individual differences because human beings are unique. You may see some traits in certain narcissists and maybe those traits won't be present in others. So instead of focusing on, is it, a, is it BPD, bipolar, autism, um, NPD, you should focus on your body, your brain, your emotional state, because the feedback that you will get from yourself will make it clear to you what you're dealing with and what you're going through. Let's talk about this in today's episode. Hi, I am Danish, a narcissistic abuse recovery professional. In today's episode, I'll share five types of thoughts you think when you are with a narcissist. Essentially, I'll be helping you to recognize if you are in a narcissistic relationship or not by focusing on your thinking patterns. Why thought patterns, you may ask? Because as survivors of narcissistic abuse, we experience something called cognitive alteration, meaning our thought patterns are traumatized and we tend to think in similar ways about ourselves, about the relationship and about the narcissist, which is why you will find many people saying the same thing that you are saying. So by recognizing this similarity and by pointing it out, by talking, talking it about, you can gain, gain a lot of clarity. If that sounds interesting, please make sure to subscribe if you haven't already or if you're new to this channel because your subscription helps spread awareness about narcissistic abuse. First thought pattern revolves around self-blame. You continuously blame yourself for everything that has happened in the relationship. You say things like, I must have done something terribly wrong for this to happen, for it to end this way. There must be something wrong with me. Why else would this person leave me the way they did? I must change myself. I need to do more. I need to change myself in these ways. Maybe then they will stay. I need to give them one more chance because it all happened because of me. If you find yourself thinking in these ways and if you find yourself having these thoughts, the possibility is quite high that you have been thoroughly manipulated by the narcissist into thinking that you are the crazy one and the cause of every single problem and issue in the relationship. You keep searching, you keep dissecting every single memory, every single experience, wondering what must be my fault? What should have I done differently to, to make them stay? I think I should have spoken differently, dealt with the situation differently. Maybe then everything would have turned fine. Simultaneously, you're able to see the narcissist's dark side. You can see the extreme abuse they have put you through and the cruelest things they have done to you, the things that are unacceptable. So your experiences are compartmentalized. One part of you tells you that, uh, yes, they are kind of wrong, but there is this other overpowering part which then justifies this and you naturally step into denial, wondering maybe it was your fault. Maybe you're not thinking about it clearly. Maybe your emotions are wrong. Maybe you're projecting your baggage onto the relationship and what happened in there. It must be you. What if you are the narcissist? What if you are the trouble cre creator? What if it is your attachment style? And so on. Thought pattern two revol revolves around uh, the complete lack or loss of self. You are not able to recognize anymore. You th say things like, what am I supposed to do from here? I don't know who I am. I can't recognize my, myself anymore. It feels like I have turned into a shell of myself. I don't know how to live my life because all I did in that relationship was about pleasing them. Everything that I was before meeting them 
I dropped it just to just to make sure they are okay with me they see me they appreciate me or if they do not leave me but now what now that they have left where do i go from here when a non narcissistic or a healthy relationship ends you're able to see some direction to your life you're not completely lost you don't feel like your world has crumbled down and everything is shattered and you do not feel torn apart you have your closure you're sad indeed you're grieving the loss but you have that hope as well with a narcissist everything is lost you don't have any vision you're constantly struggling with that heaviness that sits on your chest that brain fog that consumes your thoughts all the time you keep ruminating you keep re- rethinking and thinking about things revisiting the chapters wondering uh, how could you not see it coming what has hit you and you're trying to make sense of everything it still feels it's happening now when all of those things have been happening for years thought pattern number 3 revolves around isolation and lack of validation especially from those who you expect to understand you going through narcissistic abuse is quite a unique yet a very perplexing experience that leaves you totally shaken inside out people who have not encountered this kind of evil ask you questions like well if it is that bad why don't you leave already uh, why don't you give them a taste of their own medicine why don't you stand up to them you are putting yourself through this you're causing this to yourself because you know who they are they're treating you badly yet you still don't leave and that reinforces the chronic shame you're already feeling and the narcissist has put in your psyche which then isolates you further you stop talking about your experiences because you then think well i am the crazy one truly i am the weak person i am putting myself through this i am making this mistake so i deserve this abuse that anger and resentment just get stronger with each day that you spend in the relationship especially towards yourself and the situation so far were you able to recognize with any of the thought patterns if yes what what are the ones that you recognized with the most drop your answers in the comments below thought pattern number 4 revolves around the nature of the narcissist you're confused about their personality it's not good and bad that is not the conflict you have emotional imprints and experiences that create an internal conflict you keep resolving or you try to resolve through a rumination through thinking about things because the narcissist is the epitome of hip- hypocrisy they are the ultimate shape shifter throughout the entire duration of the relationship they keep going back and forth between this becoming a nice guy or a nice man or a woman and this monstrous version of them and when they are nice you truly feel connected with them it truly feels nice but when they are bad it's really bad so this hot and cold behavior of the narcissist creates a bond of herculean strength we call a trauma bond you're right and then it also creates cognitive dissonance out of that cognitive cognitive dissonance you say things like well maybe it wasn't that bad maybe i can just just adjust a little bit more just this small anger issue that he or she struggles with possibly it can get better maybe we can go to therapy maybe i can find a way out and i can try a little bit more but no matter what you do the situation remains the same and nothing gets resolved which is why you also keep oscillating between two extreme emotional uh, states sometimes you feel extremely empathetic towards them you feel like you are filled with love and everything is whitewashed and you hyper focus on those good experiences and memories it almost feels like you are in some kind of trance 
Other times you're filled with rage. You want to kill them. You want to get rid of them. You want to take revenge. But that state doesn't last long because the denial sustained by this trauma bonding and cognitive dissonance just takes over and fogs your judgment once again, putting you in the state of what if this, what if that, what if they're not that bad? What you need to understand is that in a healthy relationship, you know who you are with because a healthy partner, a non-narcissistic partner has integrity, consistency, they are reliable, they are predictable. They do not have these two opposite sides to them. Yes, sometimes they're sad, other times they're, you feel more connected, but it's not that polarized. There is consistency in their behavior. Overall, you trust them, you truly connect with them. So you do not go back and forth between maybe this, maybe they're a monster, no, maybe they are this angel. You know who they are, you know what you are connecting with. You also know their bad side as well, but you also are very clear about who, who the person is actually that you have bonded with. Thought pattern number five and the last one revolves around scrutinizing yourself continuously. With a narcissist, you don't walk on eggshells. You walk on broken glass that truly cuts and it cuts deep. Because with such a person, you also have to modulate your personality, keep it changing, just to maintain peace and keep them fed. Yes, you do not listen to your own needs, wants or desires because none of that matters in such a relationship. Your voice, it has to be killed. You cannot connect with this person because this person that you are with does not respond to affection. They are troubled by it. They call you crazy and say things like, what's wrong with you? Whenever you try to connect with them at an emotional or let's say a physical level, they withhold intimacy and you think maybe I am overly sexual. Maybe I'm demanding too much. And then slowly, 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 they chip away at your self-esteem, your self-concept, your needs, wants and desires. And that makes you change your values. When your values change, you find yourself settling for the things you would have never settled for before. For example, one of your top most values was loyalty before meeting them. You're a very loyal person or you were one and you expected the same from your partner. But then as the devaluation began and you were trauma bonded, the narcissist cheated on you and then you took them back even after knowing they have betrayed you in the worst way possible and they have violated your value system. Why? Because you did not know what else to do. They had almost psychologically chained you and then when that value system changes, the inner splitting happens and you think things like, well, I did this to myself. I settled for this. I asked for this. I was okay with this, so what problem do I have now? And the narcissist's crazy power of manipulation reinforces that belief even further because they have already brainwashed you into thinking you're not enough, you're not worthy of love. You have to settle for not even the bare minimum. You have to settle for the breadcrumbs, the small things they do for you here and there, and you should ignore everything else, the things that are beyond unacceptable. All of this behavior is out of character. It's not who you are. And that creates this inner split which distances you from yourself and that ultimately makes it so difficult for you to leave or to take any steps towards your freedom. In conclusion, when you're with a narcissist, you keep blaming yourself continuously because you're filled with that chronic self-doubt and you think the narcissist is the only person who knows right from wrong. Your reality has been shifted and altered and you have accepted their version of it as to be the reliable one, the correct one. Their map of territory becomes your territory. You continuously wonder who you are with because there is no consistency in their behavior. So you keep 
oscillating between two perceptions of the same person, you keep uh, also wondering, what do I need to do next to keep the peace? You keep changing your behavior, you keep walking on broken glass, and ultimately you get distanced from yourself through behaving differently. Then how you would expect yourself to behave in such situations. With that, let's bring this episode to an end. I hope you found it useful and helpful. If you did, let me know in the comments. I'll talk with you in the next one.